film such as Star Wars, the soundtrack is completely fabricated in the studio. Uh, probably on the average, 15 or 20 percent of the dialogue, which is in the final film, was originally recorded on the set during the performance by the actors. The remaining 85 percent of that dialogue was added later, with the actors coming back and replacing their lines of dialogue or different actors coming in to give voices to characters or monsters or puppets or something that might be in the show. All of the sound effects you hear in the film are added later. Everything from footsteps to cloth rustle to the handling of props to the sound of vehicles, weapons, aliens, and exploding Death Stars. Those are all things which didn't exist at the time of shooting. They had to be manufactured after the fact. And of course, the music wasn't there during the original shooting. So all all the elements which go into the final soundtrack I mean, uh, are, there's thousands of them, really. And to keep track of it all, one has to come up with a system of identifying each sound, of giving it a name, uh, giving it a description. And so as a sound designer, one of the things you do is to collect a lot of sound, categorize it, and, and you keep tapes on your shelf or nowadays sound stored on a computer disk. And it's very much like an encyclopedia. You have hundreds and hundreds of sound. I think I have 6,000 tapes in, in, say, accumulated over 12 years of just sound design work. And, 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 and that uh, is a result of going out and recording lots of material, animals, aircraft carriers, jets, appliance motors, whatever it might be, bringing them back. And you need to actually select from those tapes the things you find the most interesting and uh, categorize them and put it down on a, on a list so you can read it and find things later because your memory can't often hang on to every little detail. And so you need to somehow make a catalog of sound which you can refer to when you're on the hunt for something specifically. So part of being a sound designer is being a librarian, really, and collecting a lot of data and having it arranged in an organized way such that you or the people you're working with, the other editors or sound people, can find things in this uh, encyclopedia of sound.